Hey guys, and welcome back to Digital Film Dojo. Now, I know it's been a long time since I posted a video on here, but I've been really itching to come back and share with you guys something I've been working on for the past few months. Obviously, with the state of the world right now, a lot of us are stuck at home, and that's really sucked. But it's given us some time to explore some techniques and some skills that we really didn't have much time to explore before. And for me, that was 3D animation in Cinema 4D. Now, some of you might have seen, I recently posted a short, simple animated film on CK Productions called Pixel Pals. And today I wanted to just break down the steps I took to bring this film together. I've always wanted to make a 3D animated film, but I've always struggled getting past the step of modeling. I'm not very good at modeling. So I decided why not make a film using shapes I can actually model, such as simple cubes and spheres. And I just woke up one day and this idea just randomly came to my mind. These two blob characters that looked like Jello meeting each other and working together to get past different stages. Sort of like a game of Zelda or a portal. Except they're just blobs instead of green fairy guys or robots running around. So the programs I used for this were Cinema 4D and After Effects. And just because I use those programs doesn't mean you have to. There's plenty of programs such as Blender, Maya, or 3ds Max that are just effective as the program that I used. I just chose Cinema 4D because that's what I knew best and what I've used the most. To start off, I first designed the two characters, Bluey and Pinky. I, I know, creative. Designing them was easy, all they are are just cubes. But I had to figure out how to make them move and give them personality. So how do you make a character that's just a cube talk to another character or move around in a space. Luckily, there's a lot of modifiers in the program to make simple objects easily bend, squish, rotate, etc. So I used a combination of these effects together to make the characters look more lifelike. It was important to learn that when a character doesn't have a face or limbs, you have to really exaggerate their movements a bit more when they interact with each other. Next step, I built the stages, and I did this by using simple shapes again. I imagine these platforms sort of as shelves on a wall. It was important to visualize the actions in the scene in order to set up the stages properly. Normally you would storyboard this out, but I can't draw. So I didn't. After the stages were built, it was time to animate the characters. And this was done by using keyframes on all the different attributes that they had. Every time they would jump, I would not only just have to animate the position, I would have to animate the bend, the squash and squish, the rotation, pretty much everything. And as you can imagine, this was a long process and got kind of tedious at times. But it's really fun and exciting to see your characters come to life. One important thing to consider while I was doing this is the fact that these characters are sort of like jello blobs. And so every time they would land on the platform or something, they would have to, you know, jiggle. And then, and I would have to animate that jiggle to taper down over time. Keeping track of all these keyframes was a tough process, and sometimes I'd find my character wandering off somewhere because I forgot to, you know, delete a keyframe or something. Another challenging part was the metal block tower on the second stage. I wanted to have a tower of falling blocks fall toward our characters, but it would have been impossible to animate every single block by themselves. Luckily, there are physics simulations you can do in these programs that will save you a whole bunch of time. So once all the animation was complete, it was finally time to make camera shots. Each scene was fully animated out, but instead of just showing them all from one angle, I wanted to make a variety of different camera angles for each scene. These are close-ups, wide angles, action shots, because I felt it would help tell the story as it unfolded. So I built in several different 3D cameras and positioned them in various places throughout the scene. The advantage of working with 3D cameras is you can place them wherever you want and they won't get in the way of the shot of any other cameras in your scene because the cameras are invisible when you render in Cinema 4D. The camera angles really helped tell the story and assisted with the big reveal in the end. Next after cameras was texturing and lighting. This step can make or break your animated film. A render without lighting looks unprofessional and ugly. It's really the lighting that brings a lot of animated films to light. If you look at something like a DreamWorks or a Pixar film right now, you'll notice that it, they do a lot of complex and a lot of interesting lighting in those films. And that really helps bring them to the next level. And I spent a lot of time looking for textures that kind of represented realistic materials such as, you know, jello and wood and metal. For the lighting, since these were pretty big scenes and really small characters, I favored more general soft lighting over the entire scene and added extra angle lights to create three-point lighting on the characters. Sometimes when camera angles change, I'd have to readjust the lights, but that's the same as shooting a live action film. And finally, it came to rendering, and boy, did this take a long time. Each camera angle of the film took a minimum of four hours to render, as much as 48 hours to render. I'd say it averaged about 
12 to 24 per camera angle. What I would do is I, I typically just start a render at the beginning of the day and just let it go throughout the entire day if I needed to. Then next day, rinse and repeat. Now granted, my home computer is kind of old and it's not really set up for heavy rendering. So a couple things needed to be considered during the render too, such as frame rate and picture size. But I wanted to keep it as a classic 24 frames per second and the typical video size of 16 by nine, but also just little things to consider like gauze edges, global illumination, ambient occlusion, help the animations look more film-like and the lighting more effective. After all the renders are done, I pulled the picture sequences into After Effects. From there, I made separate sequences for each shot. And in these sequences, I added some motion blur, I added some color correction, and any other small adjustments that may have been needed for each shot. Unfortunately, during this step, I found out that some of my renders that I made didn't quite turn out the way I wanted them to. So I had to go back and re-render some of it. And finally, after that all was done, rendered all those from After Effects, pulled them into Premiere, strung the shots together, and ta-da, done, right? Well, then I had to do sound. Yes, of course, there's, there's no sound when you make an animated film. So I had to design the soundscape from scratch. I've never done that before. Luckily, I have a lot of resources where I can source sound from, and I was able to pull a lot of sound effects that sounded very professional and worked well for my project. Lastly, there were the voices of the characters. Originally, I was gonna have Joe from CK Productions do it, but because of quarantine, I ended up doing it myself. So once done recording, I pitch shift the voice up and pan the audio left and right, depending on where the character was in the scene. And then after some music, that was it. I was finally finished. In total, it took me about five months from start to finish to put this together. Granted, when first starting out, I only worked on this project maybe, you know, a couple hours a day, a few days a week. But still, it was a long process. But I'm glad I followed through and I'm glad I finished it. Projects like this, especially when it's not a paid or client project, can tend to fizzle out over time. But ultimately, I finished it and now I can't wait to make another one. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. Obviously, there are a ton of ways to make an animated film, and I'd love to hear from you guys on what kind of projects you guys are working on. And as always, consider subscribing for more filmmaking tips, tricks, and techniques, and some more behind the scenes from CK Productions videos if you watch those. I'm going to try to consistently put more content out over the summer. With that, bye everyone.